everyone. Welcome to the Spot Real Talk. My name is Tiara. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Ron. Lawanda is out this week, but she'll be back with us next week. Um, we are talking snowfall. This is a new one for us. We had DeAndre Barnes, uh, who plays Scully on the show, interviewing us uh, last, uh, I think about a week ago. And now we are talking about snowfall. This is season four, episode seven. So hang tight and we'll be right back with you. All right, we are back. And like I said, this is uh, our first snow, uh, snowfall recap. Can you believe it? <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, such an amazing show, and they want us for getting to the party so late. Better late than never. I know, <laughs> right? I binge watched it. it. It took me like two to three days to yeah, finish and mm -hmm. get caught I, up. I, could, I couldn't stop season. watching. I really couldn't. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's almost better to binge watch because you don't have to worry about waiting until next week. You can just exactly. keep on and on. So you know, in some ways, I like to binge binge watch something like this because I I couldn't. You know, I'm so angry, not angry, but, you know, like anxious once it's over, you know, you can't wait till the next, uh, the next week. Absolutely. And listen, and listen, we only got three more episodes left and the season's done. Yeah. And it just came back on like the end of February. So it, these weeks have flown by. They sure have. Yes, yes, it's so true. Um, yeah, I, I really love the show. Um, and especially since uh, John Singleton was involved with this project, um, mm -hmm. the fact that they're keeping it going um, since his passing and, and it's still just as great. Um, so they are really doing well with, um, you know, honoring his uh, wishes for the show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. So this season uh, has been a lot. Uh, Franklin, he is transforming right before our eyes. Yeah, we, we've seen him. He used to be so sweet and innocent. <laughs> yeah, he was innocent. He's, he's ruthless now. Yeah, he went from he a is. puppy. He went from a puppy to a pit bull. I mean, almost overnight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> ruthless so, and power and money hungry. Yeah, yeah. And um, a part, a big part of, um, I think, his demise is I think he's starting to get a little bit of, uh, desperate because of the situation they're in. Um, so last week, Fatback um, was kind of like the sacrificial lamb for them. He, he really um, gave himself up and was supposed to go to jail, but ended up getting killed. And so now they're dealing with the aftermath of that. Um, Leon is still reeling, you know, because that was his close friend. And so he was trying to secure um, a partnership with Fatback's family, his cousin. And they were not feeling him at all. But you know, getting back to yeah, Fatback, obviously, obviously, getting back to Fatback, you know, he, you know, he did turn himself in, and then he thought Franklin bailed him out until uh, the lawyer called Franklin and was like, "Did you bail out uh, Fatback?" And you know, Franklin's like, "No." Well, he wanted to know who did, and unfortunately, you know. Fatback never has never quite have, has been the kind of guy that kind of thinks things through because you know theoretically you might have thought I've never seen these people before and if anybody was going to bail me out I would it would be somebody I know but you know he was so it would have so, been Franklin or Leon it, it, yeah before when they dropped them off they said we'll see you soon exactly yeah. so he should have known something was fishy yeah he yeah he he should have known. But yeah. listen, women, women have been a downfall of many a man. Many a man. Many a man. <laughs> he, he saw an opportunity and it he goes, took it. <laughs> Let's just say it's biblical, okay? It goes well. Right. <laughs> I was going to say that. I, like I said, to the end of time, we have been y'all downfall. So, you know, he thought with the little head instead of the big head. Okay. Hey, I, I, mm -hmm. no argument with me. But you know what? The question, though, is what would have happened if Fatbacks just said no? I'm not taking this rap because, you know, he stood the chance of, of going to jail for quite a long time, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's just interesting to me. Well, I guess Fatback is, again, is that kind of guy, you know, he's a soldier. He's a soldier. Yeah. And he was a little, uh, you know, he had a good heart. I, I think, you know, he, 
he seems like he wanted to do whatever it took to make Franklin happy. And unfortunately, you know, just like Leon said, Franklin just set him up. More about Leon, because he and Leon were boys. Yeah, it was really um telling how Franklin responded to Fatback Steph because he was like, okay, the, the heat is off of us. The police yeah. got it. Was like, next, we good. Was, Let's go to my dad's like, party. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, Leon was like, you know, no disrespect to your dad, but I'm not about to be partying right now. Yeah. Like he right. really was hurt by the loss of Fatback. Yeah, absolutely. And and he had even offered to do the stretch. Yep. Like he he told yeah. Franklin, like I could do the stretch. So he offered himself up. And so it's you know, it's not surprising that his that Fatback's family is feeling the way that Leon yeah. is out and back on the block, which I was surprised about. Cause I'm like, there's what? a bounty on his head, and he back in the projects, yeah, like, you know, yeah, working and stuff. I'm like, he knows that these folks are after him. I wonder mm -hmm. if he has like a his death face wish. wasn't plastered all over the news. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if he has a death wish. I mean, you know, he may be so torn up about killing um, uh, uh, Scully's um, the uh, daughter, yeah, little girl. Yeah. That you know, he may have somewhat of a death wish on him or something. I I don't know, but it's certainly that was Franklin's hard idea, though. Yeah. That was Franklin's idea to send him back to the the projects yeah. to work because he said I, he said I need you back on the outside running things. He wanted to get back to business, so yeah, that, that was, was all Franklin. So and I was like, though. I'm sorry. I said that was so foolish, though. Yeah, but I thought so too. I thought so too. It, and it's crazy because when I'm watching the show, I live tweet. And to see all the people that were like going off on Leon last week, like they were pissed off at Leon because Leon snapped off at Franklin saying that Franklin, that Leon was being ungrateful the way, you know, when he was grieving. And I was like, wait a minute now, it is Franklin's fault, first of all, that they are in this mess. And I know Ron thinks that Leon is a hothead and everything and Leon is a hothead and he should have laid low when Franklin told him to. But Leon told him at the very beginning not to take sides in that Scully and, and man boy beef. He said, or oh, it's going to come back on us. And that's what happened. When it backfired, they went after Leon and then Leon retaliated. All of this, this is Franklin's fault. Yeah, I mean, I, I say that it, he definitely uh, was being short-sighted in that decision. Um, and I said, like I said, it probably came out of a space of desperation. Like he, he really uh, didn't have a place to turn. His back was against the wall. And he was like, somebody's got to take the heat for this. Well, um, you know, I mean, in a street war like that, and you got a crazy like Scully, you, I could understand his, 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 his way of thinking. Cause this is, this is all muscle and brawn. It's all physical. It, you know, the thought processes got just went by the wayside. I mean, how are we going to deal with this? Because theoretically, you you would fear somebody like Scully. You know, how much you know? How much can I take? And I, I think that's what got him thinking that way. Yes, it was his fault for getting involved in the first place. But if Leon wasn't such a hothead, mm -hmm. wasn't always wanting to go out and shoot and and shoot up at everything, might it have been different? I don't know. You know, we are where we are now, but Maybe. understand, pardon? What no, you I'm, you're, you're right about it. I mean, they both have- um, They're both wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah, they, they are. They, but, but Leon was getting something to eat. He was getting his tacos or whatever when Scully, they, when Scully pulled up on him. The, right. He was minding his business and he pulled up on Leon because he was mad at Franklin, because Franklin betrayed him and set him up with man boy. And so- the, and then, of course, then Leon turned around and retaliated. So that's yeah, the whole domino effect going right. on. Right. Yeah, and yeah. now this whole situation with Scully baby mama, I mean, she really was off the hook um, killing um, Fatback, but even still hiring, you know, hit men and, and the ladies are going around getting the wrong people. Oh, my gosh. I mean, they, were they, they were, they were, I don't know what you call those two. You know, they were just out for the for the money. You know, it was like they didn't. They were some bootleg. They were some right. bootleg hitters. <laughs> they were bootleg hitters, and they were talking about we got babysitters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even old girl that came up and rolled up on Leon at the end. I mean, 
she really could have not she should have known that he was not just gonna be out there alone she, there's she no way know. you can approach somebody but that's that's, yeah, that's, that's what you get from, that's what you get from a crackhead i mean she didn't care and obviously i don't know how she thought she would get away from with killing leon and not being killed herself I mean, particularly rolling up on him like that. Desperation, okay? Was she desperate. said that she was she in was a bad desperate. situation. Yeah, her family was struggling, and she needed the money. That's mm-hmm. what. Um, so I want to. I'm. I'm interested to see her role going forward. Like, if next week they tell, uh, show her giving up the information on who put out the hit, um, and whether they'll continue to spare her because they. I mean, Leon was really doing her justice by letting her go with just the money. Um, but I'm right. glad well, Jones stepped in and was like, wait a minute, let's get some information first. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, which was smart. Which was smart. <laughs> yeah, Jerome did a lot of saving lead on this episode. Jerome, he really did. He's the OG. OG. Yeah, yes. He and I, just, I love Jerome so much. Um, I do too. After last week and him finding out the truth of why they're in the situation they're in and him still, I mean, not like he has a choice, but still being down for the team. And you know, I like he ain't down for Louie though. You see, you see yeah, the shade. Hey, no, you no. see the shade but, he but you know what? I started yes. to say, I started to say, I like what he did with Louie last week because you know she's going down south to try to spread the business, and she's giving this business to these two very green, don't know anything about the business. And you know, Jerome was right. He says, You setting them up to either kill or get killed. And you know, all this for what? Jerome has always been the voice of reason in this situation. He told Franklin the same thing from the jump. He was like, you can't get into that business and just think that everything's going to be all good. Nobody's going to die. Nobody's going to get hurt. And, you know, he was telling Louis the same thing. Like, you got your business, you you know, the club you always wanted. We got millions of dollars. What more do you want? Exactly. (laughs) But Um, she said it. It was it was the Reed thing. It was the CIA thing. And that's when she had to come clean and let him know, like, this is not why we're staying staying in this. You know, basically, we have to because the Reed situation. And I tell you, those folks down there, especially that Charles character that's sleeping on the couch in Arkansas, he already looked like a crackhead. So yeah, he is. He he's probably gonna be the first casualty of their little business. He'll be he'll be the reason. He'll be the reason that that business folds, guarantee, guarantee. Yeah, you're gonna be a crackhead. And then the fact she scared me because I'm like she's pregnant, and when she tasted the, yeah. the coke, I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. and I don't she's know. If it was, I don't. I mean, I guess I know drugs weren't um, the the um, perception of drugs back then might have been a little bit different, but still doing drugs while you're pregnant in general is not okay yes like if you taste it that's still going in your system like you're carrying a child i was just like whoa (laughs) so that that was off the hook for for sure um and then speaking of like how how people are changing just looking at sissy and and how Mm. she has done a complete 180 on this situation so against it um this week we seen her flossing her new watch (laughs) Mm-hmm. I know. I was like, Look at this Yep. Uh, well, you know what? Yeah, I'm, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I uh, no, I, I like what Franklin said to his mother. Did you ever think that you'd be in a position to give away a quarter of a million dollars? And she, you know, she said no, but then she said, I, I knew you would be. And you know, that and you know, it's funny because you know, Nikki and I were talking about it and, you know, as you would be upset, you know, she, she didn't like the fact that Sissy went and got involved with it in the first place, but that's what money would do to you. You know, it, it, blood money Mm -hmm. is all over the place, you know, and, and, and as I said, you you can't, I can't think of too many places where blood money doesn't exist. So, you know, you get enough money coming in and it'll change anybody. And you see what it did with Sissy. I mean, you know, but again, Sissy was trying to run you know, a legit business based on illegitimate means. Right. She's trying to do the real estate thing. She's trying to be clean. And also, I think with that, like, you know, for a while, she and um, Franklin were estranged. Yeah. Because she was, you know, because he did, she didn't want any parts of it. I think she wants to be in her son's life. 
Yeah. You know, and at this point, she's like, if, if this is what it has to be, then this is what it has to be because I want my son in my life. Yeah, and I think she thinks yeah, she can take better care of him if she's closer to him. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's that with all the shows we do, you know, Power, whatever, you know, the mother. Well, and she always, asked her for an exit plan. Like, in, in yeah. you know, a couple episodes back, she was like, listen, you know, I'm only doing this because I want to see, I want to see the exit plan. What is the strategy? And she wants him out. Like, she well, wants him to. It's interesting because I think that initially she wanted him out. And I think she still does. Mm -hmm. But the money is starting to jade her perception mm -hmm. of things. Yeah. Alvin is providing a way out. He's literally saying, you know, there's, I mean, he, of course, he told Sissy what he did. He, he really had no choice because the reporter lady was going to out all of them. Okay. So he's like, well, you're going to put, but I don't, but I, you know what? I agree. I agree with Alton, like, as far as what Franklin is doing, as far as, poisoning the community, everything that he said about our people and, and the community and what Franklin was doing, he was right. I don't agree with the way he went about it. I don't Talk, Talking to the reporter, he I has to either. consult with them first so that at least he's not blindsiding everybody. But you know, I think that he felt, and, and I could understand, he felt he didn't have a choice because everybody's in on it now. You know, you got Sissy who's locked in you know, because he tried to talk to Sissy. Uh, she's locked in, thinking that she can run another couple of years. You know, um, of course, Franklin is is, is locked in. Uh, Louis uh, said to uh, uh, Jerome, or rather Jerome said to Louis, we can't get out if we wanted to. So if you stop to think about it, the only real way to get out is to point that finger over on the side that should be pointed that finger should be pointed at, which was the government, because the government started this whole thing in the first place. So you know. I, I agree with that, but the, but the government also can have you killed. This, well, this is the same government that that makes that kills people and makes them look like like they killed themselves. Like when I thought about this whole Irene character, and I don't know if you guys seen that movie called Kill the Messenger, and it's about the real reporter Gary Webb who was from Cali, who broke the story about the CIA and everything and the drugs um, infiltrating the, um, the black community the black and stuff. I, I watched that movie, it was crazy. He was, uh, you know, at first he was celebrated for breaking the story, then they broke his credibility. He lost yeah. everything. He lost his marriage, that. he lost, he couldn't work for any papers. Right. And then later on, they said he, he killed himself. Yeah. But he had two bullet wounds right. in right. the head. But yeah, but right. he killed himself. So yeah, yeah. I, like so I'm just saying but it's six in one hand him talking to, the other. It's six him talking to the reporter puts the family at risk. It, but you but you yes. know what? And I that's think, why I'm saying like either way they're kind of screwed because you know, Reed said something a few episodes ago. And he was basically letting Franklin know, like, I, I have the, the control. He's like, just as fast as I got you out of jail, I can get you back in there. And that's why. And so, I'm like, you know, it kind of, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Because if you give up the CIA, Al Alton hasn't had any dealings with Reed. He doesn't know what kind of person he is. And based on this week and, you know, after his brother's passing, Reed is only getting worse. He's getting more ruthless and a little um, less reckless. reasonable. But, but I think, Alton, but I think um, from Alton's experience with Black Black Panther, he, he, you know, he, he, he understands what that yeah. government can do. And I think that's yes. what he thought. And I think that's why he thought that that was really the only way to go. And you're right. You're right. They, they will kill you and you'd be off the map and nobody would miss you. But, you know, I think that mm -hmm. what he was thinking is a six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Because if they carry on the way they're going, you know, with all the the, the strife in the in the neighborhood and so forth, they're going to get killed anyway. So I think he was thinking that this is the lesser of two evils. When in fact, you know, when we look at Reed, you know, he that might have been a good setup too, because Reed is falling apart, and you know, over the death of his uh, brother Listen. and his father not wanting to uh, be a part of his life anymore, Reed is falling apart. And, and Gustavo, I don't know he what. He's falling apart. And, and Gustavo, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what angle he's playing here because he seems to be protecting Reed. Oh, I, from Franklin. It's clear, Gustavo. Gustavo is trying to find about Lucia. Yep. Yeah. His his yeah. his his lover. Right. And so the way to find out is through 
to uh, Reed. So Reed. he's playing it close. His loyalty is with Reed right now because he's trying to get what he wants. Like if you watch the episode, he was getting the faxes and stuff with information about Lucia. Yep. So that's that's his angle. He's trying to find out what happened to her. So he had to stay close to Reed. But he, um, I, I agree with you, Ron. Like I, I'm not saying that that uh, Alton was wrong because I, I mean. I'm with them. I, I wish they would. I wish there was a way for them to walk away unscathed and yeah. everything. And I and I get what he's trying to do because he he said to the reporter like, "Listen, if you print this, you can't put anything about my family. It's only the CIA. But the folks that know, they'll be able to point. I mean, oh, yeah. even if they don't say the name, they'll be able to figure out who it is. Oh. And it, it's just and then that just now puts um, Franklin in a tough position because. Reed is a, t a loose cannon now. And I feel like this. Man Boy has been looking for the plug. And I feel like Reed will cut Franklin loose and go to Man Boy in a minute. When he told him everybody is expendable, and he said, and I do mean everybody. Yep. That was a threat. Yeah. And it was a threat to Franklin. And he, he would find somebody to replace Franklin. Mm -hmm. And also, I feel like when he said it, about everyone being a spindle, it also applied to Reed because I feel like the CIA, that guy that came to check on him after his brother mm -hmm. um, died, I think that's why Reed is keeping the, the operation close. He's not letting anybody else know because he's trying they, to will, they his will get rid of him. They, they will him. get rid of him. Yeah. Yep. He's trying to secure his spot so that they need him. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But mm -hmm. Franklin, you know, then, with with him hitting his dad with the gun, burning on the gun. Uh, yeah, that was wild. That, I, I thought he was gonna shoot him. Yeah, he was so angry when he started pacing with the gun. I was like, oh my god, he about to kill his dad. Yeah, I, no, I you know what? I'm, I, I'm I'm really starting to believe after the way that the episode ended with him coming back to his girl's house and kind of crying. As he sat between her legs, I'm like, what did he do to Irene? I know because he was begging Alton to tell him who the lady was. And I don't know if Alton, I he mean. Did, he didn't tell he her. Didn't, she, I, she I know was... he didn't tell him, but um, I'm thinking that Franklin has his his ways. He can probably get that I'll figure it out somehow. I think he okay. was just. I think he was just worried because he was like, this is going to come out and hit the fan because because you, you saw at the end, he he had been trying to page Reed 911 and couldn't yep. get a hold of him. So he was trying to tip Reed off before the um the article ran because you saw like once they show her typing, you saw the editor's room. They were working on that was going to be front page news the next day. Trust. Yep. Trust. Yep. So that, so he yep. was like, he just was panicking like he, he said and he said to T, he was like, I think we in trouble. So I think that's why he was coming undone. And I think it's only a matter of time, though, before Irene is up out of here. Oh, yeah. She got to go. She got to yeah. go. I, I, and her husband yeah. was trying to warn her. He tried to yeah. tell her what you're doing. Like, you're playing with fire. This is not just any old person that you're writing about. This is the United States government. And it doesn't yeah. just affect you. Like, it's not It's not you. You looking for your Pulitzer Prize. And you know you you, know, you got an ex husband, you got a daughter, you got a family and yep. stuff, and they don't you know don't it's just that, go after you. They go that, after your people too. It's that your life, your whole yeah. life, and everything. So that investigative reporter, you know, they they're very myopic because to be an investigative reporter, you got to love what you do and you got to love digging in. And she's that type, you know. But what I wanted to say with Franklin with um, Alton. I was a little disturbed to not see um, sis, uh, Sissy kind of step in there. I was hoping those, you know, look, you just finished celebrating his sobriety birthday. And so he, he's a changed man. And a trauma that just that we just witnessed could send him right back to that bottle again. And I was kind of thinking, well, you know, should she have just stepped in and said to Franklin, he's not going anywhere. You know, we're family now and we're going to keep, you know, we're going to keep this and we're going to do something and we're going to hold ourselves together. But she did push Franklin off him, though. Yeah, after Franklin, she, she, the from she, she pushed Franklin yeah. against the wall. She was like, yeah, I mean that, which is why I'm saying her last season versus this season. There's a mm -hmm. clear difference. I feel like her last season, she was like so strong in her conviction 
that you know like this is dead wrong and she you know she would get up in franklin's face you're not going to disrespect me you're not going to disrespect the house and it's kind of seeming like she's more lax now because the, I mean, the money changes your perception of what you're doing. Maybe she's like, she still feels a way about it, but it, I mean, a little money to coach your pockets makes things a little bit better. I, I think it's not just the money, it's the influence because that guy, Paul Davis, that she's doing business with, he was somebody she had been trying to do business yep. when she was in him and, and she could never, yeah, he, he never paid her any attention. And now she has a seat at the table with him well, and everything. Right. So that is what's changed. I, it's, it's money, it's money and power and influence. That's that has, has money, money is power. So when you get a taste of that, you know, it's hard to let that go. You know, that's worse than crap. And you know, the thing about it, I was thinking about it because I'm like, it's such a shame that our people don't get the opportunities because we we really are some good business people when given oh, the chance by nature um, and, and <laughs> seeing how this opportunity of franklin coming into some money has been able to transform everybody that he's associated with like he's changed all of their lives and everybody is leveling up you know making deals and doing business and and getting a new um a new level of just bossing up like when given the opportunity we can there's so many transferable skills from the street mm -hmm. that can go into business and we oftentimes don't get the opportunity to show that yeah and, and, and keep in mind on the show franklin is only 21 years old so he's a kid with millions of dollars money in offshore accounts businesses he didn't put everybody else in a position to have businesses he's yep. a boss so that's one of the things that when I think about like all the mistakes he's made this season, I was just like, man, you know, he always was so unflappable, kind of like ghosts in power, a uh, young, a young ghost, but he, you know, he always, it didn't seem like he was making a lot of mistakes, but he's made a lot of mistakes this season. And then when I start thinking about it, I was like, you know what? He is still a kid. Like, you know, I, I think we got so caught up in the fact that he is so bright yep. and, and everything and smart and strategic and everything. But I, still think the, 21 year old kid. but I think the mistake that Franklin has made, and I didn't necessarily see that with power. You know, friends are friends and business associates are business associates, and they're never the two shall twine as far as I'm concerned. You know, you get, you, you know, his family members are all involved. You got your soldiers that are family members. And that gets heavy because you got to protect them as well as keep the business uh, at a certain level. And, and that can be hard. And I think that's what's happening. That's what it hap what's happened. Well, Tasha and Tommy. Man. Yeah, but, but Tasha and Tommy were only one. They were only one. But you know, you didn't have all the family out there doing, doing, you know, doing all their, their mess. You know, I just think that at some point you got to narrow you got to narrow it down and, and, and get some real soldiers that you can depend on and for your sake can be expendable. Family is not expend expendable. And that's the problem they're running into. Let me tell you why I think this is different for Franklin though, because when this, okay, think of this, this is a, a, a period piece. This is the eighties. And so Franklin just coming into this, like cocaine in the powder form, it wasn't, I mean, sure people were probably getting killed, but black folks couldn't afford that. Right. So once crack came into the neighborhoods, that brings a new level of access. Mm -hmm. And so Franklin is saying like, this stuff is selling like hotcakes. Let me bring my friends and family in on it so we can all prosper together. Not really understanding the effects that it was going to have on the community and not understanding that, you know, just like the government was dropping drugs into the neighborhood, they were dropping weapons into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the unintended consequences come from because all of this violence starts spreading like wildfire all of a sudden. And it that's what Jerome kept warning him about. Like this game has a lot of cons that come with it that you might not be prepared to deal, um, deal with. Mm -hmm. And so that, it's kind of like he's learning as he goes because mm -hmm. this is, a unprecedented time the 80s like none of this stuff existed before then and so it's like a whole new world well, and cocaine, they're kind of just playing it so well, cocaine did exist i mean because you know la okay but not crack is not crack, right 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 in their in their realm of not 
know, right. where it's accessible to black and, and even cocaine was more um, of a, a pleasure drug for, you know, um, folks that had money. Uh, you, for you, affluent people. Right, and that's right. what she's saying. Right, right, right. And that's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I agree with that. So, you know, again, though, it's just hard. I, I agree with you. You're 100% right. You know, he didn't, he had to go to somebody. So you go to your friends and family. I got it. But um, I, you know, when I look at the soldiers that are on the street, Leon, I think I would have pushed him back a bit to be a captain, so to speak. I don't want you on the street, Leon. I need you to, I need you to train up the soldiers. I need you to, you know, make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. But I don't need you out there on the street. Have him, you know, push him back, bring him back. And no, well, I think that's what Uncle Jerome is to him. Uncle Jerome is that kind of background player where it's like you and can cover up the the drugs and hide hide things and stuff like that. I think uh, Leon is too. He's a loose cannon, and I he's the enforcer. Yeah, yeah, he is, and and I, I think you need somebody like that. Uncle Jerome is too. I think he has a better position being behind the scenes and, and doing the the um jamming Jerome's. As like the cover <laughs> I, mean, you, I think you can be an enforcer and keep your hands clean too. Yeah, uh, you know, and I. But I, I think I think it's different because Leon, like he was one of the few that he he's been in jail. He's had a couple strikes. He's been in and out of jail, and and he he's a killer for real and stuff. Right. So you know, Tommy, I I, Tommy. I don't know if he knows how to be right. I don't know if he knows how to be the play that that position. Yeah. You know, um, before we get off of this subject, though, because we mentioned something about Reed, and it's interesting that Reed flew directly to Avi this week. And, you know, Avi already got caught up previously for stealing from Franklin. I don't trust so Avi. I'm like, Avi is really getting people hemmed up because he know good and gone well, he took that money. Yeah, I don't trust Yeah, because I think that banker was innocent. Yeah, he mm -hmm. was. He, and, he and, was. And, Reed, and Reed is losing his mind. <laughs> and, yeah. and the big girl's getting waterboarded. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And so I'm like, I think he Reed would have for sure, If the police hadn't come in, Reed would have for sure killed an innocent. Oh, my God. Yeah. Reed was like calling her Hezbollah and yeah. all the stuff. And the guy's like, what? <laughs> right, right. But notice, Avi only does that stuff like stealing from people who he thinks can't do anything about it. He did it to Franklin because he thought Franklin was too dumb to know what was going on. He yeah. did it to Reed because he didn't think Reed was going to pull up on him. Like, what's, what's good? <laughs> right. Now, and see, Avi might be up out of here because you keep playing games with people's money. Yeah, yeah. You know. particularly with Reed. I mean, Reed, Reed has the, right. the means to take him out. He has the means to take him yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. He's really playing with fire. Yeah. So I'm, I'm and, 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 and Reed looked crazy and everything this week. But I tell you what, 15 mil, I might have pulled up at the bankers of somebody's house. I would have been in my ninja suit. Like, <laughs> too. like who got my money? Yeah. But, but the money was put back. Um, you know, the money was put back. But The Reed, money was put back. She did, but, they but, did. They did take care of it. Right. But but Reed, you know. That's the point, though, because, you know, He's really holding up their operation. They're losing the war because of Ivy stealing money and not <laughs> holding up his end of the deal. So, yeah. you know, that that war means so much to them. And now it's starting to impact their standing. You know, they're, they're losing. Their people are dying because mm -hmm. you want to steal money. And they want to pull and they want to pull Reed. They want to pull Reed off the price. So Reed is really invested. So yeah. with money being so, because that's when when the um the guy pulled up from the CIA, he was like, "Listen, this stuff, money, guns, stuff, not you know, stuff is going missing. Yep. Things are going awry." So, um, Reed is trying to protect his interests, and with and that, I think he's falling apart. Supposed to the U.S. interests. Yeah, and he's falling. Oh, he, of course apart. he is. Uh, you know, he's a has a lot on him, and um, you know, and I think that's why he he rolled up on that banker like that. Because, you know, oh, yeah. ordinarily Reed would think things through, but that was just vengeance. He says, you know, I'm going to teach you not to steal from me again. And regardless, you know, and I know Reed can read personalities and, 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 and you know, he should have been able to see that, that that guy was telling the truth long before, or at least after he waterboard the uh, guy, he should have seen that the guy. Yeah, because the truth. Reed has been coked up, too. 
Yeah. Reed has been yeah. coked up. Yeah. He's been slipping. He's been, he been getting high off his own supply. Right. <laughs> and, and and getting drunk and stuff. So his, his you know, his falconies are a little, and plus he's grieving. Like the the girl, he lost, the, you know, his ex-wife. Right. Because she set him up. Right. I mean, I'm like, she he could have been killed. Yeah. But the way she blew up his operation, yeah. you know, that she set him up. So that was, you know, the love of his life. He thought they were getting back together. And yeah. then his own dad was like, listen, <laughs> yeah. there, there was not a need for us to talk again. And right. it, I wish it was you that died. I'm like, what a thing to say to your own child. Yeah. So he is really messed up right now. Yeah, it's true. Um, one person that, that kind of got it together, though, uh, was Wanda. We seen last week she got clean. She went through her withdrawals and everything, and she ended up coming out clean. Um, but I was really worried for her because it's so easy to revert back to your old habits when you're still surrounded by the same type of people. And also, she doesn't have the money to um, to do anything positive with her life right now. So her coming to Leon for help was um, a good thing, and he suggesting going to Alton's uh, shelter. With, she's, with yeah, and she's looking for work and I'm a little worried because when she gets if she does find work or someone starts to pay her like you said will she go back to the streets and, and get that drug and, and drug and I, think I was wondering when she was her. when she was asking for work I was hoping she wasn't thinking she could cook rock for them again heck no oh, oh. they mm -hmm. are not having that it'd her. be another pookie situation for New Jack City no, <laughs> yeah, I like to wonder if that's what you had in mind, girl. I hope that you. I'm like, no, she she needed to work at the shelter. She right, needed to work. Right. She was doing. This. They were a good team. She and Alton when they were looking yeah. for the the man who you know unfortunately overdosed. Yeah. Um, you know, you can see that she had her faculty. She was being helpful and everything. I'm like, you know, she would make a good assistant at the shelter. Yes, <laughs> she, she took but definitely not cooking up cook uh, again. Yeah, well, she tickled me when what she said he, he, he. She tickled me when she said when she said he's got those frozen eyes, uh, you know. He knows. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. His eyes are wide open, and he's mm -hmm. dead. I guess they are frozen. <laughs> but you know, she she has a good role. I, I I like to see her come out of it. I like to see her come out of it and um, and and be a part of Franklin's team. I think she could get there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Franklin's going to want to let her back nah. in after Yeah. Nah. Tough for her. But I, you know, well, if it happens, um, if it happens, I think Leon would do it undercover. I don't think mm -hmm. he would tell Franklin. Yeah, he still has a soft spot for her. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. But I was um just speaking of Alton, him seeing that father um overdose and nobody being able to take the, his kids in and stuff like that um i think that had a, a really strong effect on him going to irene and, and telling the truth because exactly. he, it did what exactly. it's doing to the community exactly. and, yeah. also, and, and it's his son directly yeah. on it to the like, community mm -hmm. you know he, was, he confronted franklin first of all about what he's doing destroying the community um and then even confronting him about what he um did when he killed the neighbor so I was I, like, whoa, I was like, oh, he's gonna get killed. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I mean, he came out and say, said what everybody knew, but don't nobody want to say. And Sissy, she knows too, but she's too, she's in denial. She doesn't want to say it out loud. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I think um Alton and Sissy are the only ones that know. I don't think Louie and Jerome. Right. And, but, and, and Leon, but those two, yeah, the parents know he did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they know he did it. And and I I was afraid for Alton in that moment when he yelled it out because I was like because Franklin has changed so much because when he had that altercation with with Alton, his face he just looked so so furious and ferocious and he was pacing and he even he even stopped calling him dad he was like Alton Alton leave get Alton like he I was like now he calling about his government I was like. Franklin might shoot this man. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, he ain't kill his dad. That's right, Franklin yeah. is a trip, man. He is He's a trip. Yeah. He is a trip. So his girlfriend, yeah. uh, so, you know, I'm I'm T, uh, Tanasi. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping that T is on the up and up. I'm hoping that she doesn't have much to do with man boy, but it seems I, you know, I it, it all from the I beginning. So, I, I don't I think no, I, I thought like you. Uh, that she was either FBI or CIA uh, initially. And then I started thinking, well, maybe she's working with Man Boy. 
um, because she's just too clean. It's just, it's, it's, you know, she, when I say clean, she shows up periodically in, in Franklin's life and she's right there doing all the right, perfect things that Franklin needs, head rub. Uh, body massage, sex, whatever. Okay, she looking at his beeper. Then she was asking about the plug last week. She yeah, was asking right, about yeah. Reed. I was just yeah. like, I yeah. was like, mm. working hell. Yeah, yeah. Working. I was like, mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. and, and what? And what did I say about women? <laughs> and how y'all are with women? <laughs> so I was like, and, and it's not like she's a random chick. This is his ex, so yeah. she knows him. Like they have history. So you know. Okay. Yeah. He's done. It is what it is. Franklin, watch out, though. That's you know, hard. it's funny. Yeah, a, a, a woman, a woman will bring him up or tear him down. You know, <laughs> it's a double-edged sword with with some women. I mean, you know, women can bring a man up and they can tear him down, all in the same breath. So I don't know. listen. I don't even think we've seen. I don't even think we've seen the last of Melody either. Mel, okay, she definitely. I think. I think we're gonna see her again too. And who knows, he might have to take her out because, you know, she's off the stuff now. She's into church. She's in her right mind. And who knows if she might start talking to the reporter or, or whatever. Like, you know, who knows? So she she might have to go too. I think I, I feel like she's gonna I think she's gonna reemerge. I think Irene is gonna sell him out. I, I think it, I don't I think it's gonna come to a point in her storytelling that she's she there's no way she's she can't bring Franklin and that family into that story. I, oh, she, she, it's gonna, it's definitely. Um, yeah. I don't know if you saw the uh, the title for episode eight. It's called Betrayal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for, for the very next episode, so it's another things that can happen next week. Like I, you know, I was thinking, even the man boy T situation, T might be exposed. We might find out that she's a mole. Uh, who knows? Like. Reed may go to man boy, like he may drop um Franklin as a um as a connect or or, or whatever as a business partner. And um who know with with the reporter. Like it's so many different things that that's a possibility for next week, but it's definitely called betrayal. Wow, yeah, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so sad that we're getting towards the end of the season because I'm already real in. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Me too. And it's gone by so fast. Fortunately, we got a lot of good stuff coming our way, you know. Uh, I'm looking yep. forward uh -huh. to, um, you know, the Godfather of Harlem. So I'm really looking forward to bringing mm -hmm. it back sure. in, in our discussion. So we got, a lot, we got a lot of work to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We do. But I, but I also enjoyed having our conversation, our interview with um, DeAndre Bonds that played Scully yeah. on the show. He was that was great. And he was hilarious. Yes, guys, please make sure you go back and, and check that interview out. Uh, it should be the previous post. Um, and that was a fantastic interview. Um, make sure you go out and check that and also support his clothing line, Grind Till We Rich. We got some merch coming. Uh, we yep. will be able to wear it in a, one of our upcoming recaps. So and I got, I got my shirt. Well. I got my shirt. And it, you know what? It feels like a <laughs> It's good quality too. It's a good quality shirt. You know, it's not not cheap. So I can't wait to wear it. I'm just waiting for you guys to get yours. And, <laughs> you know, we'll put it on at some point, I hope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we will. We will. Cool. Um, if you guys don't have anything else to add to this recap, I think I'll I'll close it out. You got anything else? I'm good. No. Nope. All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please uh, go down in the comments and let us know what you thought about this episode. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, click the notification bell so that you get alerted every time we post. Um, we are also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Spot Real Talk. So give us a follow there as well. Uh, Lawanda will be back with us next week. Um, but until then, um, you know, Tiffany, Ron, and I are going to sign out and, and thank you again for watching. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yo, this is about to really hurt some people's feelings, so if you a little sensitive, you might as well turn this joint off right now. Okay. How you afraid to drop a dime when you already dropped a dime? Got a wife at home, but you steady on my line. Talking about shorty, you remember when I grind slow? Did I really, did I really blow your mind though? Nah, you got me confused with your
your other booze I've been peep game, so I never gave a cookie up And that's why I got your wife on the line, man And I hope she gets every single diamond ring